Uh, Dave, I can't really talk right now because I'm super busy painting. What are you doing? I don't, I'm not sure, to be fair. Uh, I'm painting you a picture. <laughs> All right, hold on. <laughs> yeah! Love you. Bye. Mm. They'll all watch this and I'll say right at camera, I'm gonna win again. And you're gonna think that I'm not gonna win again and I'm gonna win again. And you're gonna be sitting there saying to yourself, how do you do it? I'm good. Buckle up, buttercups. The beauty of Western Mass, huh? I go hiking probably four or five times a week. I hike barefoot because if you try to like think about anything else, Stub your toe, step on an acorn, and then you get an immediate reminder to just go step by step. We are heading through the beautiful downtown Northampton, my hometown. I grew up in Northampton, Massachusetts. Uh, youngest of three boys. Probably pretty normal, all dude household childhood. So I was in chorus, I played the piano, took a bunch of art classes, did a lot of plays, musicals, and I would like leave chorus practice and go to football practice. So I got to kind of be friends with both sides of the high school experience. Being the kind of fusion uh, art meathead kid that I am, which no one does that like me, quite like me. Best parents on planet Earth, truly. My dad was a social worker in Greenfield. My mom is a nurse practitioner now. She manages nurses. They did the classic, make sure that your children's lives are better than yours technique. And they're like two of my best friends, so. Here's the whole family in a tree. We got that going for us. I'm taking you guys over to my high school, which I was asked to leave at one point first day of my junior year, we decided to shrink wrap the vice principal's car. I was working at a moving company at the time. We had access to shrink wrap. Shrink wrapper car, found out it was me, expelled me. Yeah, I had to go live with my aunt after the shrink wrap incident. They sent me packing. They said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. But instead of Bel Air, it was Lexington, South Carolina. So the next year I came back, my senior year, and on this very football field, during the pep rally, an undisclosed masked vandal ran 120 yards fully nude and sending the entire student body into a frenzy. Now, I was alleged in that offense, but no one ever was brought to justice. I mean, truly, I never did anything that isn't currently legal or will be in the next five years. So a lot of people would say I was just ahead of my time. Never went to college. Pretended to go to college, but I was not enrolled in the school. I knew pretty early that I wasn't gonna have a conventional like career. It was like sink or swim, my mischievous ways were either gonna turn me into something that was pretty cool or a felon. Thankfully, I went the cool route. I was in San Diego singing karaoke. I was trying to sing Creep by Radiohead, but I tried to do a Ricky Martin and pour the wax from a candle on my chest, but it was an oil candle. So I just poured hot oil on my chest. A woman approached me and said, that was really funny, will you do a quick interview? And so she asked me some questions, told her my name, blah, blah, whatever, and like walked out. Didn't hear from her for like three, four months. 
but then reached out and said, do you want to go on the show? And it was already one season one. I had a girlfriend, I said, no, no, thank you. Uh, and then they called me for season two, and then I was 26, and they said, this is the last opportunity, do it or don't. And I said, let's roll the dice. We never gave up on love, and we did it. I swear to God, I walked in the house, and I was in shock and disbelief that they were able to have existed for this long. I was stunned that they were still alive. I thought to myself, you guys must have extremely good luck because there's just no way you could be this way and have made it. And that was my first kind of encounter with this style of person that I now am. Yeah. IQ test would go a long way. I'm just throwing it out there, dude. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not disappointed. I, I, if she, but if she, she is, really is, and she yeah, clear, she's not. making it very clear. If you lose someone for three days and you had to go and live with them, how would you feel? Stop bitching about it and go into the truth. I'm sorry. Amanda's so passionate about everything that she does, and she needs there to be conflict. But I learned to love her very quickly. Just avoid being in the crosshairs. It's coming at someone. It's inevitable. It's eminent, right? It doesn't matter. It may not even be deserved. She needs it. You guys, this is your first shot at a million dollars. All you have to do is correctly identify your perfect match. Everyone has to choose correctly. If just one person gets it wrong, you're heading back to the house to start all over again. And remember, if you get zero matches tonight, a blackout, your prize instantly drops by $250,000. We're told the rules in the first week we see everything play out. In the second week, we black out. So we lose $250,000. And so I say, everyone's all disappointed. I said, oh no, guys, this is the best possible thing that could happen. We are now assured victory because of the data that we have. We can run this thing in an algorithm, win it in week seven. I'm gonna play this game the way I wanna play this game. We could figure this out with strategy. Turn off the parts of our minds that are thinking with our hearts and completely look at this like a math equation. Are you smarter than everybody here? I'm very smart. Are you the smartest person in the house? I know a lot. <laughs> and not many people here know a lot. So they get very what? confused. Yo. Everyone was like, you, you're an asshole. And I used to call everyone dumb for two weeks. So they weren't gonna be like, we love you, you know? And I said, okay, fine. This is the only opportunity that you'll get. I will not help you guys after this. And they all pretty much told me to go eat So then fast forward to week 10, they've kind of understood me now and it's time to win. And they were like, Dev, you think you can do that algorithm thing? And I said, conditionally, I will give it a shot if all of you one by one get in a line and come up to me and apologize and then I'll solve it for you. That was you with Amanda. Nelson, week three, six, and eight. I'm with Brittany, nine. Pay attention, guys. You two are together, three, seven, and eight. Austin. I sat with Stacy week four. Week four. Done. I sat with Hannah week four. And that's when you sat with Chuck? That was easy. That was probably Emmy-worthy television performance. Some of my best. If you watch the season and you don't like me after it, you are a fool. So I get a call, they ask me if I want to do the challenge. I didn't know what it was and I just said yes and then went along with my life. Didn't do a push-up, didn't take a jog, just sip until the day I left. First season was Rivals 3. So, and it was a pretty stacked lineup. We're talking Wes and Nani, Bananas and Sarah, Vince and Jenna. And I got there and I was like, oh, this is what we're going to do. I was like, these guys are here. Bananas, go back, watch that season. Tell me he wasn't an absolute piece of He knows that. That's hilarious. That's Get hilarious. Get him out of our face. That's hilarious, Johnny. That's really funny. That's really 
funny. Yeah, he was, an, he was a total dick. And I never met him before. So I walked in there and got like level 10 banana man. And we were on opposite sides because I was Wes's lackey. <laughs> it was never gonna work out. Let's go. I'm scared already. Knees locked, eye on the skull. We got this. Me and Cheyenne came in green as ever and lost first. Here we go. We did our best. And we're brought back for absolutely no reason. And then pulled white skulls and one white cork all the way to the final. Uh, Woo! Oh, Holy yeah. to the flag! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. We did it. <laughs> Woo! Me and Cheyenne, one season, one final. No one thought we were finishing that. I was ecstatic we were both alive. One of the only people in the history of the challenge to be eliminated and make it to a final. No redemption house, no nothing. I came home and went back. So it was, I mean, it was awesome. It was like, in my opinion, well-deserved. Let the games begin, baby. Let the games begin. Second chances. We're ready, bro. We're ready. No. We're so ready. Then I will be in a king size bed and you can't come into my room because you're not allowed. That yeah, I, I was pretty insufferable there. The situation that happened with Morgan is that Tori got in his head and mind no, it's, I don't even think it's sad. And he gave up $75,000. I... <laughs> Here's the thing, Tori was so full of Tori was in her chaotic era and she was letting it rip. I didn't know what to do with her either. I think she's a professional finesser. She's uh, amazing. Tori? Yeah. No disrespect. I'm not trying to, it is, she lies. Thanks so much, guys. It's actually really genuine. No, you're a professional finesser. Probably not. Mm. Good night, Medusa. Whenever Tori's like, you were mean to me, I'm like, you took Geo's side. Anybody remember Geo? <laughs> exactly. Winning was awesome. I was early in the canvas industry, so I wasn't like hurting for cash, but I did like having a lump sum because I know the value of that and immediately took it and put it into the first business that I ever started, which was New City Brewery. All right, y'all. We are moments away from the big reveal, a project that I have worked tirelessly on, New City Brewery. Maybe 10.30 here, but it's five o'clock somewhere. Sammy, I met Sam like when I was a kid. He was one of my oldest brother's close friends and he's a super quirky guy. Let's put me on stage, Sammy, what do you think? Sure. Sing a song. Oh God. I was bartending at a bar. He was making beer and selling it at that bar and then when he branched off to do his own thing, he said, you're coming with me. There is a serious void in male strip clubs in the area. We actually isn't one. I have the Speedos for it. And we got plenty of room. Please, God, no. We could have a real tall pole in here. He get me 60 feet in the air. Could you pour me a beer now? Yeah, absolutely. I feel the sudden beer. urge to drink. Bananas, get in here and do the toast. Oh, God. Come on. We're getting rid of the bottom six players today. What? Dirty 30. After I went straight to the final in Rivals 3, I went straight to the Redemption House. I'm getting repeatedly smashed with barrels from all angles. This is not a nice game, but I guess I wasn't ready for it to be this dirty. In a purge like that, there's really not much you can do. As soon as the horn blew, everything went out the window and we got blown out. Corey, who's the first guy that you want to get rid of and why? Um, I'm gonna have to go Devin because I feel like I can't trust them. That, not, not, uh, that's fair. 
<laughs> I mean, sometimes it's out of your control. Truly it is. And I don't think, even if I train in that situation, our team's losing to their team 10 out of 10 times in the can and carry. And I could have been running for years I'm not beating Corey in the cannonball race. And he's never saving me. So my one shot would have been to come in first place in the barrel rolling, which was also never gonna happen. I'm a middle of the pack guy, all right? I'm not a top quarter. I'm, 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 I'm back, bitches. I see my vendettas are behind me because guess who got in shape? This guy. You lose first and the whole internet calls you fat, you're probably gonna take a couple, take a couple laps, you know? <laughs> I, gave it a, I gave it a fair effort. This is the moment I've been waiting for for a long time. We are finally gonna see if Bananas just barks and can't bite. I think Zach said it best. I was Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man. Absolutely dialed in. Hey! Woo! Good job, baby! Devin wins! That was awesome. It was euphoric. My interview in that, great editing there, too. Let's go! A giant rush of victory enters my body in a euphoric high that can only be described as Nirvana. I got the last laugh. I am 1-0 against Bananas and Eliminations. Right in his smug little face. Final reckoning. When I was poised to probably win, not once, but twice. Let's just look at this. Tony and Bananas go all the way to the final with everybody hating them. You throw me on that team and we dominate from both ends of the court. With Johnny's experience and my ability to stay calm under pressure in a you know tight situation, that's, and I was working out at that point, that would have been a wrap. Here's the kicker. Uh, I flew out with the original cast to come onto this show and I was here in South Africa uh, for about 24 hours when I was told that my dad had passed away. We probably got there at 5 p.m. and then at like 8 a.m that's when they came down and told me I had the phone call. And I wasn't gonna leave. I was like, I asked Sky straight up, I said, what am I supposed to do? She was like, you're supposed to go home. Cause I was like, sh I was in shock. I didn't know what to do. So I was just like, okay, you're right, I should go home. And then I just like zombied my way home. Here's my dad. RIP Timo. There he is as a kid. Nice guy, we miss him every day. My dad's big thing was like, never quit. If you start something, never quit. And you'll see, go through these, run the tapes. I've never quit anything, ever, ever. I needed to go home. I had to do some soul searching and I know that he would have wanted me to be here and compete and not quit. So I'm playing to make my dad proud. Then I come back, I get another good partner in Corey. When I first heard the news about my dad, obviously I was uh, devastated and the biggest thing that he tried to instill in me throughout my whole life was never to quit. So when I was given the opportunity to come back, it just felt right. He loved this show and he loved me on it. And this is exactly what he would want me to be doing. We went back to back eliminations because Amanda and Zach couldn't agree. Legendary stuff. I feel safe. Out. Was I not the, was I, I not? Safe. <laughs> wow. A lot of people say this, I could have won that season. And then he body slams Tony over pasta. Hey, we go fight right now. We go fight right now. He loves y'all. He loves you Just terrible. Your father just passed away. And you're pathetic piece of ass. Oh, came interesting. came back interesting. out here, dude, my dad in. when you should be home this mourning the death this of a family good. member. This is good. You decided instead bring my to come back oh, out to South good. Africa, that's dude. Enough. I hope you're nothing like him. I hope the apple fall, oh, fell far from man. the tree. Because you're a piece of shit. Bananas should not have done or said what he said. He should have had more compassion and he should have been for someone that calls himself an empath. I know, it's delusional. You, you are something, but I don't think it's that. But with that being said, there's truth in some of the things that he said. I probably shouldn't have been there uh, because 
I was not, clearly I was not in the right mental state. You guys know, we here at The Challenge don't condone physical violence of any kind. And it's insane to me that a million dollars doesn't prevent stupidity like this from happening. So Corey and Devin, you're gone. What? Oh my God. It was this very sad time, right? So it's like anybody that's been in that situation can say they probably weren't fully themselves for a year or two after. And then I had to watch my own reaction to it fresh nine months after that. So then I was like, oh, f I was f up. I was like, am I still f up? Like that was not me on that screen. Like that wasn't me. I don't know what I was doing, but it wasn't me. But that's one of those situations where like now, again, I talk about being battle tested. Sometimes I look at the people in there and they're ready to break. And I'm like, you have no idea how hard I'm willing to go. You have no idea. You can't break me. After Final Reckoning was Double Agents. Big Brother sucks. Who said that? I don't know. I need to know. Why? If I see weakness in them, I will win every single time. I used to try to push them over the edge. Hey Josh, what's eight times nine? I will bomb. What's eight times nine? I swear to God. So I never met Josh. I don't know nothing about him. That's a lot. And you know, I just. I saw him and it just seemed like a funny thing to do. If you're actually mad at someone, you're not gonna yell times tables at them. That's not something you would do in a fit of rage. Josh, if you're jealous of my sweatsuit, you can ask to I won't it. Love you. It's funny to say that, like aggressive relationships I'm having here with people. It's pretty much they don't like me and I just say funny stuff at them. That's just Josh, though. And now I love him, you know? I just had to figure it out. Devin knows what he's doing. He's triggering him, he's trying to gaslight him. Devin, let's go, like, get out of here, stop, go to bed, dude. Me and Dave were friends before Double Agents. We weren't gonna necessarily play together, but we were friendly. She says I look like her neighbor, Dave, and then I was like, dude, you f call me Dave, you f taking a peek at yourself? Kind of looking like Dave, too. Devin, he's trying, but I don't think that he like has the arm strength to get it up quick enough. I'm strong enough to pull that rope, okay? I'm very strong. Everybody knows that about me, very strong. <laughs> and I did lose on purpose in that scenario. No, I'm just kidding, I couldn't pull the rope. Super heavy rope. Take your pick, brother. Take your pick. All right, Darrell, let's do it. Devin, pick anybody you want. My dumbass picks Darrell. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Got it. Come on, All right. You win, Darrell. If you lose to Darrell in a tandogram that he's done six times, you got to take that out. Now, when they announced the puzzle, and then I said, we're gonna need to get Josh another pair of pants. Bro, I'm not scared to be down here. And then you lose in said puzzle. Let's go! That's not good. The greatest game on earth. Uh, that is what we call the early glow, and it is remaining undefeated. So that was an important lesson that I needed to learn there, which is shut the f up. So yeah, Double Agents was imperative for me on my path to becoming a challenge champion. Honestly, there hasn't been a season that I haven't learned a super valuable lesson. And I think that that is what separates contenders from champions. All right, everyone, welcome, agents. In preparation for Spies, Lies, and Allies, I went to a three-week silent retreat. And I went in there dialed and ready to just shut right the up. And it worked. I was like, oh, just don't say what you think. No one will bother you. We can use the weight of the cinder blocks on top of the grid to get it down to a point where everybody can put stones in. That's the plan. You gotta get that thing down because 12 hands are better than two. Little one's in, little one's in. We gotta make sure it's heavy enough. One, two, three, I mean, are you planning on winning and jumping over to Emerald? 
Probably. So then it would be best to probably not call it an Emerald Girl out because you're going to steal one of our spots if you want to run with two other girls. Yeah, I've already thought that through, but it doesn't really bother me. I don't understand their issue with each other. I really don't. In my opinion, in the challenge, they're not playing the same style game. So I can see where either one of them would discredit the other one's style, right? Amanda says, oh, you're just big and strong and fast and like ath athletic, essentially. Like the old CT or Fessy situation, current Fessy, where it's just like, whenever he does something good, it's just discredited because they're bigger than uh, people and they're stronger and they're faster, right? So it's like, okay, congratulations. You won the thing you were supposed to win. And anytime Amanda does good, uh, I think Tori looks at it like, well, we're keeping you around because we want you in the end. So like those two styles are never gonna link up. They're just, it's just not, there's not a mutual respect. But I think they're both great. I'd take either one of them as a partner any day of the week. All right, agents. Welcome to the final. I was surprised I didn't win, to be honest. I had that, I had that final locked up. I had probably an hour lead on everybody after the first four or five checkpoints. Okay, you have an hour lead. Well, that's gone now. And you're all starting from the same spot when we blow the horn. Okay, sick, glad I paced myself. The only benefit that my lead got me was not going into elimination. Sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles. But then also, when you look back and you watch the tape, I get beat up the mountain by Emmy. So did I really deserve to win? No, I was the last one up the mountain. God, wait a minute! Zero, five, one, two, one, zero, one, six, one, zero, zero, two, one, zero, <laughs> one, four, zero, six, two, one. Wow. Wow. Congratulations, Devin. That was awesome. You remembered all that himself. Good job. I went so hard after that. 212 when I ran that final. It was 212 pounds. I was probably 190 when I walked into Ride or Dies. Here you go. Yeah, it's like you're playing pool, Devin. Devin's coffee table is this maze game, his literal coffee table in his house. How the hell am I supposed to compete with a guy who has this challenge elimination in his living room? Well, you are in my house. Um, I said it was my coffee table, and although it would fit nicely there, no, this is how I know I'm in people's heads. Who has that? That game doesn't exist. How? How do you believe that? That's absurd. When I watched that back, I was like, wait, they were thought I was serious? And I, I say dumb like that all the time, because one of my strategies too in eliminations and going in, into eliminations is I'll dial in like right before. But in the lead up, I'm kind of dicking around, cracking jokes. No one wants to see that. Like for a person that in their mind shouldn't be confident, just walking around like they're unfazed is scary. She's thinking now, oh, okay, uh, we're Who is that? Jordan. Yes! At this point, I had really gotten to know Tori pretty well. When she broke up with Jordan, it, like, it was just a difficult situation for her. So when he came in, I was like, this is not gonna go well. It's just like ticking time bomb status, right? I pretty much was just like, hey, how do you want to handle this? You want to be petty? Let's f write in our diaries. I'll get mine right now. You want to be productive? Let's go ride on the bike, sweat it out, right? I was just like, however you want to handle it, I'm in. And I think that was probably all she needed. Now, mind you, I've never played with Jordan either. The one season that I had done with him was Dirty 30, where I immediately exited. So I didn't know how to handle him. He didn't like me for a long time certainly didn't trust me and didn't like that I was as close as I was to Tori and he doesn't respect the way I play the game. He does now, because he has to, he has to respect it because I beat him. Do you want to re-up our deal with Jay Michelle? No. Ooh, that doesn't really work for me. Do you understand that we're gonna look so shady to the people 
that actually trust us if we don't make it clear where we stand. There is this difference of like friendship and politics. Tori and I have a deal with pretty much everyone in the house and Jay and Michelle are a strong pair and they are underrated. The only thing that Jay and Michelle can't do to save their lives is politic. Well, guess who can? This guy. Unfortunately, the contract has expired, but I would be open to a renegotiation. I am the broker, okay? I am brokering mutually beneficial deals at almost all points in time. I've been trying to do it for so long. The best way to make a deal is to put an expiration date on it. If you overpromise and underdeliver, no one trusts you. If you get into a deal with somebody and they start your partner's ex on the other side of the wall and you're locked into a full game deal, that doesn't work out super well. Oh, it's a literal corn maze. I think we go this way. Okay. As soon as I saw the corn maze, I, I looked at Dave, I said, oh, it's a wrap. Because I take my mom on a date every October, we go to the corn maze. I do these for fun, literally. I'm a corn maze guy. Let me just shut the up, but I was telling her pretty much the whole time, dial in, it's a wrap, it's ours to lose, finish the drill. We know this is us, We just let's just do it. Can you please take that door down? Take that bitch down. Thank God. Yes! You ready for this, Dave? I'm ready for this, bro! That was like, outstanding. It was, I mean, it's, it's almost, I almost want to say how much better it is for me than other people because no one ever thought it would happen. My family has been talking for a long time. Like they know how good I am at stuff. And keep in mind, I win Are You The One for the Are You The One people. Go to my, go to my first final, then I win second chances. Then there's a pretty significant drought, right? So they're saying for years, really, bro? Like, you can't do it yet? Like, this is works, like, you should have won by now. And everyone else, the Fessies of the world are saying, literally at the reunion, I'll tell you one thing, you're never winning this. And a lot of people felt that way. Just like, how could he ever win? He's just a normal guy. Vindication is sweet serenity. We couldn't have had a better season. It sucked to beat them, but also like as badly as I wanted Nani to win, I wanted Johnny to lose. And like anyone who's rooting for him to get his eighth before me and Tori get our first is a jackass. And each and every person that's standing over there played a significant role in us being champions. And last season, CT and Casey started what I'd like to think is a tradition. They gave second and third place $50,000 a piece. So we're gonna give every single person standing there $38,000. 38th season of the challenge. We're gonna keep everybody getting paid thing going forward. I love it. That's what it's all about. Love you. Solid as a rock. We're like the Oprah Winfrey of $38,000. I would consider myself the Oprah Winfrey of $38,000. Look under your seat, which effectively does make me the anti-bananas. All right, everybody. It's all boiled down to this. It's gotta go. God damn it! This is where I grew up. This is the house where the whole family gets together. Thanksgiving, Christmas. Uh, it was important to me to keep this as a home base, keep it alive. So when my mom was thinking about selling it, I said, not on my watch. Turns out I just won the challenge. I'll go ahead and buy that. I just really like it here. It's quiet, no one bothers me. Big fish, small pond. My mom currently lives here, but it is my house. Currently under some renovations in here. This is my fitness room. This is where I do all my fitness. I got these things over here that I do stuff with. You do this, which is sick. And this is how a challenge champion works out, which is dope. This was Sky, this was our cat. RIP, Sky. 
We had a two-person funeral for Sky in the backyard in which I learned to play Candle in the Wind and Dust in the Wind on the keyboard uh, and proceeded to play those songs while my mom spread Sky's ashes in the backyard. It was really a moment. May look like a nice cat. One of the meaner cats out there. Wished it was nicer, but we still do love Sky. Growing up, I was like, can't wait to get out, can't wait to get out, can't wait to get out. And as I started getting older, I was like, man, this is kind of chill. Like, I kind of like it here. And in March of 2024, my mom's going down to Florida and this will be my bachelor pad. I don't know. I don't know what, what's next for me. I'm kind of just going with the flow. That's kind of always how I've done it. I'm probably gonna win a couple more, to be honest. Now I have the blueprint. Um, maybe I'll just state this for the record. Seven seasons, three finals, two bronze, one gold, seven and two in eliminations. Eat my butt. <laughs>